Hi everybody, this is Ruth Ratliff and today I'm having a talk with one of my clients who is actually another sound therapist like me and she's going to be telling us about her experience moving through my program Crystalline Voice Transform Through Sound. I hope you enjoy her very poignant story. And today I am joined by Bertharis Lantigua. And Bertharis is a Reiki and vibrational sound therapist located in Haworth, New Jersey. Welcome, Bertharis. Such an honor to have you on the program today. Oh, thank you, Ruth. I am so happy and honored also and excited to be here and have a, an amazing conversation with you. <laughs> Wonderful. And just uh, as an aside, Bertharis and I were actually in the same class together uh, to get our vibrational sound therapy certifications. And that is, you said, coming up four years this June, next month. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it's been four years already. So you started out as a Reiki practitioner, right? And I did. It's been about six, I would say maybe six years ago, I I decided to learn Reiki and went all the way from level one to, to master training. Beautiful. And what prompted you or called you, inspired you to go into the sound healing arena? It was very spontaneous. I am an impulsive person and I'm really led by my heart and my soul. So prior to Reiki, I. I was going on um, a quest like to heal, to heal myself emotionally. And I did talk therapy, which was successful up to a certain point. And then I knew I wanted to do something different, something deeper and hence Reiki. And then I took um, a yoga training, teacher training for a year and all while still working a full-time job as a recreational therapist at a psychiatric hospital. Wow. So, in, so one day at work in my office, I'm on Instagram <laughs> and I see this course for vibrational sound therapy. And I saw that the training was within a week from the time I'm seeing it on Instagram. So quickly I called my boss and said, Hey, can I move my vacation up a week? And I registered for the course and it was just, very spontaneous, something that I saw, the demonstration of the bowls being placed on the body, and I knew I needed to do it. Something inside of me said, do it, you need this, this is going to help you and help others. So just listening to that inner voice and just going with it. Yes, yes, and it certainly is a complementary modality to Reiki, I think, as well. Yeah, and I, I think that's a little bit about how I came to it. I mean, I've always been, you know, as a person who is a, a musician and a, a singer and then a voice teacher. I mean, I've always been involved with sound, as it were, and uh, the voice. And yeah, but when I saw that course, there was something inside of me as well that said, no, I want to do this. This is some this is a path I want to take. Uh, as a uh, as a way to uh, not only expand and heal myself, but help to expand and heal others. Uh, so it's it's uh, it's very amazing, isn't it? How you as you go through life, you start to develop and trust your intuition even more. Yes, even more. And I started with I purchased a small Himalayan singing bowl, and from that, when I saw the course online seeing how they were placed on the body, it's like, oh my goodness, this is taking it to a whole nother level realm of physically feeling the frequencies and vibrations. And like you said, with Reiki using energy, moving energy within the body, it was just, I have to do this. <laughs> Right. It's really profound. Um, I know a lot of uh, my clients who come to me for the vibrational sound therapy, they have had uh, experiences with the crystal bowls, with the sound baths, which is an ambient sound washing over you, which is very profound as well. But 
I combine that with the vibrational sound therapy in the sessions and it's a whole other level of experience and opening for the body. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's fascinating. And as we, um, as we are moving forward um, with your story, you as a, as a vibrational sound therapist and a Reiki practitioner, you still were looking for something more even, right? And then you <laughs> were drawn to wanting to expand through the voice. The voice, yeah. And once again, it's listening to my heart, listening to what my body, my spirit was ready to do next. And I just knew something about 2022 it's like, hey, it's time. It's time to heal my voice. And that's something that I have had some resistance towards due to trauma in my childhood, due to um, cultural upbringings where, you know, I was told you don't talk back or um, you only talk when you're asked to talk. And so I was ready and I knew I was being called to do more with Reiki and with the vibrational sound therapy that using my voice and feeling comfortable in hearing my own voice because that was something that I, I didn't feel, you know, growing up. I didn't like the sound of my voice and with taking your course, I've learned that, you know, when we don't like the sound of our own voice, that's some kind of imbalance right in, in our lives or maybe you could explain that a little bit more but certainly right yes it is it's it's an imbalance in well just the way your, your self-image exactly how you feel about yourself um it's a it's almost like a you know when you when you push aside that part of you that which i, I always say i feel like the voice is our soul's frequency in the physical it, it really it, it is you it is a holographic representation of you literally physically and uh, spiritually and when you push that aside or if it's shut down through trauma or upbringing cultural issues and so forth it's like you're bifurcating your body mind spirit you're separating, you're, you're, you're not a, a whole, a holistic being at that point, because that part of you is so representative of the part of us that is divine. Yes. And so growing up, I, I went through experiences where I learned, I created this belief that it wasn't safe for me to use my voice. Uh, I, you know, I was threatened if I used my voice, I would, I would be hurt. Um, there was physically being quieted. So that was in my body. And with Reiki, I did so much healing with, with those traumas and also with vibrational sound therapy, a lot of help with my anxiety, tremendous help. And I just knew, okay, it's time to feel safe and using the full expansion of my voice, which just something told me, reach out to Ruth, reach out to Ruth. And this is now, you know, it's been three years, three plus years that I haven't connected with it, with you. And I reached out to you and asked what offerings do you have if, if, if there's a way that you could help me heal my voice and you said oh my goodness i just created this course and i'm about to launch it and you'll be the first one and that right there was just divine confirmation for me like Literally. it doesn't and, it doesn't yeah. get any more confirming than that <laughs> and it, it really has been i mean since because i know i started your course prior to the holidays, the ending of, of last year, right? And since then, I was not doing group events. I was mainly doing one-to-one -one sessions in my studio. And since then, I've done at least, I think I'm going on my sixth um, group event, meaning 10 plus, and I have an upcoming event, which is 
hopefully going to be really big and not that the amount of people matters, but for me, it's speaking or just using my voice in front of more and more people creates this, oh, so with you, I've learned tools to use prior to these events and even in my daily life, if I have some experience that isn't, it's a bit stressful going back to the tools that we learned in your course. And I can name a few if you like. Please, I was just right. going to say, which, which are the ones <laughs> are the most helpful for you? So um, learning about, I'm looking down at some of my notes just to remember, um, sounding and vocal toning, that is just really um, feeling comfortable hearing my own voice and also using our primal voice, just making these sounds that through evolution, through we just don't make them anymore or and just allowing myself to to connect with that primal essence and using the full range of my voice also the breathing exercises along with qigong like moving the body with vocal toning uh, and asking the body asking each organ you know, does it have something to say? How are you feeling today? And letting that sound, whatever it is, just come out of my mouth without judgment. You know, it's also not judging ourselves. And you may feel a little awkward in the beginning, especially if, if we haven't been vocalizing or using our voice in that way since what? Since we were little kids? Right. It's like you're a little so, kid again. You have to allow that yeah. freedom. Yes. So... Um, and also learning about Heart Math Institute, which that is very new to me. So, and heart coherence and brain coherence and how the heart has this frequency. And if you could talk a little bit more about that, because I'm still, still new oh, to that. Sure. Heart Math has found out that the heart produces this torus field. It's a, it's a field that comes out about three, four to five feet from your body. It's an electromagnetic field. Uh, and, you know, when you see somebody for the first time and you go, oh, or you go, ooh, you know, <laughs> it's like you're feeling their heart. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Uh, I, yes, I truly have experienced that and believe it. <laughs> yeah. I, really, I, I believe it. Right. Yeah. That's your heart. That's what you're experiencing is that feel. So we are not just this. We have other, other layers and levels of our energy bodies. And the heart is much more powerful, they're finding out, than they originally thought. It's actually more powerful than the brain in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. The heart knows. It just knows. Right. And Listen that, to your heart, right? And that's the connection <laughs> Which is, between the heart, the closeness of the heart uh, chakra and the throat chakra. Yes. You know, there's the heart comes through the throat, right? I mean, that's what I feel, that you can either, you can... Speak from your heart, as they say, which is not an easy yes. thing to do because it's it's a very vulnerable space. So I do believe that being vulnerable is very important and freeing. I believe it's so freeing that when we're vulnerable and we're speaking from our heart, it's people can feel that emotion, that pureness, your authenticity, and they feel safe in that. You know, they can tell that you're just speaking from your heart and resonating from your heart. So that's a daily practice for me and showing up that way, just open-hearted and hence, you know, working on my voice and having that and loving the sound of my voice and just fully accepting, accepting who I am, where I am now and moving forward from there. Mm. And do you feel like the work that we did together in the program helped you expand in general? It sounds like you were saying that earlier. Definitely. I mean, when we started uh, just speaking my mind more, like if, like if I didn't like something, just saying it, just vocalizing it, just having it come out instead of suppressing it, which 
was a self-taught behavior from a very young age is just holding and pushing it down and it's not safe if I say something and just feeling safe and self-expression and and knowing that I'm gonna be okay no matter what and it is there she goes Julie has no problem <laughs> Julie has no problem expressing her voice whatsoever <laughs> yeah the Amazon truck comes, UPS, she lets them know, hey, I'm here, you're on my turf. But <laughs> Isn't that? But, yeah, I, I channel her energy too, her courage. It's, it's given me a lot more courage, I have to say, in, in starting your course in in valuing my voice and what I have to say that it is important and that our voice is our medicine, like you said, to ourselves, but also to others. And how dare us, right, deprive our voice from others. And we all have wisdom to share. Beautifully and, spoken, thank you. And share it, even with a shaky voice, which I often have, in, in my group events, but just do it. And I wanted to see if you could speak into the way that I work the sessions where my idea was to use the bowls, the crystal bowls specifically, and my own voice uh, in the beginning to help uh, get you into a more receptive state uh, for the deeper voice work. And I wanted to get your impression of that. Yeah, I love this exercise that we did towards the beginning of the course where you invited me to bring a singing bowl into our session and to do some vocal toning with the bowl just to hum with it, its frequency, or whatever I felt called to do or to release from my being to do it with the bowls. And I never thought of, of doing that to create this like singing with the bowl, not just having the bowl do all of the work, but we are also this instrument, just like this bowl is this instrument and it's made of crystals and we're crystal, crystal line beings, right? If I said that correctly and I'm holding to crystals, I work with crystals, I love crystals. And also in our sessions where I was receiving a sound bath from you with the crystal bowls and the Zen bowls, I started to hear messages come through. And that was something new for me. And I felt it was also happening because I was tapping in deeper to myself and clearing my vessel of, of trauma with my voice and having the courage to step into my voice that now I could hear and receive more. And within the frequency during one of the sessions, I heard, I thought that you were playing a new instrument <laughs> and my eyes were closed and I was hearing these sounds that were so different. And I didn't want to open my eyes because I wanted to stay, you know, in that flow, in that mm -hmm. place where you go. But I, I had the most beautiful experience where I heard, it wasn't a voice, but it was a language. And that's what I heard, that frequency is a language. And it was telling me like, not to worry so much about this physical world, the 3D world, that there is so much more out there and just to live life and and not be so self-conscious or worry so much about how people are going to perceive things to just live life and, and, and be and and I also heard you're not going to be the same after this experience and and that scared me a little bit because I was like oh goodness what what does that mean I'm not going to be the same and it just seemed like I was tapping into these other realms that I never reached before or that I wasn't maybe ready to hear, hear these messages. But I guess I was because I did. And 
no, I'm, I'm not the same since that. Like I said, I really am moving into more of a community-based offering, which if you would have asked me to do this interview maybe three months ago, I would have said no because it was so scary for me. And not, not to say that I'm not a little nervous now, but it's, that doesn't stop me anymore. Where before, it would. It would paralyze me to think, oh my goodness, I have to use my voice and speak and be heard. And how am I going to look and all these other things. Where now it's just, I'm going to show up. They said, don't worry about that. So I'm not going to. And Yes. Yeah, it doesn't, it, you know, I mean, let's be clear. It doesn't mean you're not going to feel nervous or fearful. It's, it's kind of like feel the fear and do it anyway. Exactly. Just don't let it stop you. And I have been myself on my own journey of voice. And just because I'm, I have a program and I've been a voice teacher for 20 years does not mean that I don't still deal with this on a daily basis as well. <laughs> it just means that I am not allowing it to stop me anymore. I just yeah. refuse to let it stop me. And I'm just putting, as you say, showing up uh, for yourself and for others as well. Beautiful. And, and do you, I, it sounds like you say that when, you, when you're able to access those deeper parts of yourself, and I think even subconsciously, if you're not like, because you're very gifted, you're very intuitive, uh, and I feel like even if you're not, uh, you don't, you're not at that level of, of intuition, that, of having that developed, uh, I still feel like your subconscious gets it. Uh, oh yeah, the sound therapy before um, before the the work, you know, the one on one work, and then I feel like you are you were more receptive. You know, I, I, that's what's my idea to uh, to uh, to have you go deeper into yourself, to be clear, more clear about what we are doing together, and more focused. And I think that uh, would you agree that 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 helped you a little bit? Oh, definitely. I. You know, what I've, I've learned from you and still learning because I go back to, to your course and I incorporate it. Um, I, I see myself more confident in, in my sessions with clients and I think in me showing up that way energetically, they feel it and they're receiving that also and empowering and even simple techniques like humming that you mentioned, uh, just just doing that, using our own vibration, right, and our voice and our own frequency to help move, move stagnation. Um, humming has been something I, I do often. Well, it's so simple. <laughs> you wouldn't so think simple, it simple. but so it builds. Simple. It, it it build. I mean, part of the. Uh, the course too is me going over some uh, vocal pedagogy, some techniques for, from my uh, experience as a voice teacher. And uh, part of it is you need to build resonance in your voice. And when you build resonance and you speak with a, with a little bit of more um, feeling of, of coming from up here in your face rather than here, like kind of down here when you're talking, that doesn't sound very good, right? You wanna bring your voice up to where uh, there's more space in the back of your throat and you feel your voice more in, in your more in your head uh, and that can create a much more powerful um, experience not only for you but also for your listeners and certainly for your clients and that has been a uh, for me even as a uh, as as a trained singer for many many years and a performer for me to use my voice now as a healing instrument is a very, very different way of producing my tone. It's a very, very different way of how I look at my voice, my perception of my voice. It's, I don't have to worry about being on pitch. <laughs> I don't have to worry <laughs> about my voice wobbling or, or whatever. Uh, I'm just allowing what yeah. wants to come out to come out intuitively and people will always ask, they'll always say, what, as soon as you started to sing, that's when my, I started to cry, that's when I journeyed, that's when I was getting messages. Um, what is it you were singing that was so beautiful? What song was that? Uh, 
you know, you don't realize yes. the, the profound capacity of the voice to move, touch, heal, and inspire yourself and others. Yeah, I want to add to that, Ruth, because, yeah, during our, our sessions, when you, when you use your voice and organically, I would say it's very organic, whatever just comes out from you, the way I receive it is, it's like an activation. I felt like just parts of me that have been dormant or that are quiet just wake up with the sound of the voice when you bring the voice into it but definitely wanting to use it as medicine a positive way to activate ourselves and each other with our voice mm, I love that word <laughs> activating yes yes per is it perfect yeah the voice activates yes yeah. Oh, I love that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know if I could, I think that's a wonderful place to stop actually. After four years, not seeing each other and to come together, back together in this nature, right? To, to just um, help each other, guide each other to expand, you yes. know, yes. with the voice and vibrations and frequencies. It's so thank you. I'm so grateful grateful for you, grateful for our path together, and I'm so excited for what's to come. I like how you use the word pioneers and how we are these pioneers. Yes, and I'm, I'm owning it. I'm owning that word. Yes, yes. we're being pioneers. Yes, full speed ahead, right? Full speed ahead <laughs> and, uh, and allow your heart to speak through this and your intuition as well to yeah. come through through your voice, through your beautiful voice. What a pleasure to talk to you today, Bertha. Oh, thank you here. so much. Thank you. So much love for you, Ruth. Thank you, and me so for much. you. Thank you.